For Comedy Hype News, it's your boy K-Rock. If you happen to scroll through streaming services for the latest stand-up comedy special, you can thank Charlie Case, who went from lawyer to laughter, bolstering a career as a pioneer in the art of stand-up comedy. Charlie Case was a former entertainer writing his own songs before he would go on to be known as one of the most famous vaudeville acts of all time. Adding the godfather of comedy to his title would come later and is due to him truly being the first of his kind. If not for Case, one can only wonder where would the world of humor be. As comedy once was an act without words and far less people had access to see these shows to have an opinion. The advent of stand-up comedy does not have a specific date that is agreed upon. However, it is clear that the origins location of that is New York City and its infamous vaudeville shows. Vaudeville shows were showcases made famous during the late 1800s and into the early 1900s in major cities with people yearning for entertainment and willing to spend the money. Prior to these shows, bar halls and other places that only allowed for a small amount of people were the only venues to put out such entertainment. These showcases at the vaudeville shows granted individuals with nearly any talent a chance to perform, and individuals changing talents was common. As a natural storyteller and musician, the man of many talents would turn to performing via singing prior to his discovery of what we know today as stand-up comedy. Meet Charlie Case, the black man credited for inventing stand-up comedy, a story you should know. Born of Irish and African-American descent in Lockport, New York on August 27, 1958, Case was pushed to succeed from the beginning by his hardworking parents. His parents provided a solid upbringing that saw Case attend quality schools and he was overall a great student. Despite a career path that saw him graduate from the Union School in 1878 and go on to run his own law firm, albeit with only him working for it and making more than a modest salary, Case would give up on all of this. The law firm was not very successful even being on 75th Street and Main Street or downtown Lockport. To pass the time, Case would often play his banjo and sing in his office, along with no worries about business. After a failed trial in which Case saw a man get three years in prison, he shifted to being a salesman, believing that this would be sensible, as he assumed it would be less intense than selling a story to a judge and a jury. After finding much failure also being a salesman, one thing that stuck out to those doing business with Case was the fact that people would listen to his pitches for such a long time and be captivated yet still not buy anything. As a singer, Case made music that not only focused on his upbringing, but used similar characters to get across comedic messages in the songs. Many of his songs became notable as the crowd would wait anxiously for the point only to be hit with a joke when they least expected. While this was successful for Case, there were limits and audience would often get bored with stories. With the monologues Case did prior to comedy, it was clear that he could keep an audience guessing and engaged even as he told the stories and songs in a lackadaisical voice. Depending on when the act would go on, the crowd could be lethargic, making it difficult to get a feel for what went well altogether. The comedy bug was always there for Case, with hints of it even showing up in his work. Sales seemed like a great feel. However, in hindsight, the real intrigue for the customers were the stories Case told, and the hilarious points that seemed to come from nowhere, much to desire customers that barely purchased anything. This signaled the shift to entertainment as Case didn't know he would become a fixture, but it was clear his storytelling was a thing of legends. While there have been jokers and fools for years throughout history, many of them focused on the same routine with little imagination beyond what everyone else did. Speaking for these acts did not exist at the time, and as a result, the popularity would die down in decades to come. For Charlie Case, the art of comedy was taken further after he began with a group of partners believing they would become successful. According to the discography of American historical recordings, it was also not uncommon for African Americans to perform in blackface as a loophole into the entertainment business in those days. As a black man with an Irish mother, Case was sometimes granted access that perhaps a darker skinned black man would not have been. This granted the opportunity for him to hone his storytelling elements that would make his act special. By the mid to late 1800s, Charlie Case had realized his true talent of being a solo act with his own brand of storytelling. While Case is often noted for wearing blackface in his performance, this was not uncommon for comedians at the time, who saw success and looked to get the same. Blackface was something Case grew to believe was counterproductive for the black community, and that it made them the butt of the joke. Many in his family believed that it was the years of having to put blackface on simply to have the opportunity to be seen as a comic that played a major role in his depression. 
Unknowingly, the man who started comedy as another form of entertainment popularized physical humor as well, with him doing a signature arm swing motion as he would tell his stories. In the beginning, the jokes were simple and given to the crowd nearly too quick for them to digest. Comedic timing was not yet a thing, with so little ideas, other comedians such as Case at the time relied heavily on the same tales with small twists, if not copying one another, material completely. With no laws in place for intellectual property, Charlie Case was ripped off several times by other comics, with there being no penalty. Like many great comedians of modern times, Case turned to his family for inspiration in his acts. Think about comics such as Eddie Murphy, Richard Pryor, Dave Chappelle, and Kevin Hart, just to name a few. Many of Case's sets contain stories about his father or other relatives with comic twists. Seeing the simplicity of the jokes, many that attempted to recreate the technique realized just how difficult it could be. For this reason, many historians of comedy collectively agreed that the art of the punchline to be credited to Case as well. Live music and even songs that became known as signature for Case were central to his act, as well as making him commanding man for shows during a time when few were beckoned by name to perform. Being a top performer was pressure enough. However, being a black man at the time, trying to make it in entertainment, proved to have other issues as well. Information gained from the Vaudeville America site revealed Charlie had a very hard place on the bill, following everybody else. But as usual, his peculiar methods reached the audience at once and created lots of laughter and received lots of applause. One can see that Case became aware of the copying and subsequently dug deeper in order to keep his uniqueness to his craft. Racism played a role as well, with many of the audience members leaving during his early performances or attempting to rattle him, unlike they would do to white performers. There is no set documenting or talking about the act, but in some ways, this shows hecklers may have always been around. Producers and booking agents salivated over Case as his simplistic approach made him mysterious. His clothes were nothing special. Some would even describe them as old, and the piece of string that he carried during his performance appeared no more special. Noting that all of the material Case was producing was original made many watchers watch closer, waiting to see whom he would take material from as well. Nevertheless, Case continued to prove his talents and sharpen his skills, bettering his comic timing greatly before he died, compared to the beginning where he was first to speak. As the early 1900s came, Case found himself depressed, with several people in his inner circle concerned. People were shocked as Case always seemed to be never too high or too low. The man was much quieter off stage than on. However, his family remembered his love for making people laugh and playing music long before he performed on the vaudeville scene. Never once to complain about his stolen material, Case's depression went unnoticed until it became a serious issue that made family and friends intervene. Tours were canceled with an especially large one in England during 1909. After much speaking with family and even seeking therapy, Case realized he'd grown to nearly despise blackface. The act Case saw as limiting to black people and something that he felt was overused. To combat this, Case would go on to reinvent himself, having a show simply alone without any live music or the need to entertain the audience with gut-busting stories. Issues came about both prior to the changes of blackface and after for Case. Prior to the switch, there were several audience members that found themselves unable to fully take in the joke before Case swiftly moved on with his story. After the changes, there were issues of people feeling as though his act had become boring. Case at this point was not nearly as animated, seldom moving from his spot on stage. With the death of Charlie Case came great sadness, confusion, and conspiracy theories surrounding his death. On November 26, 1916, Charlie Case died after being shot in his home. Due to Case being killed via a self-inflicted gun wound, there were rumors early on that depression led to his suicide. Another account that is more widely accepted state that Case was cleaning his gun and it accidentally went off, the proof being oil in a handkerchief that was left nearby after he shot himself. Those from Lockport were especially hurt as the man had become a household name. At this point, people had grown to love his stories about his father's nonsensical style of comedy with scrambled timing, and the fact that Charlie was simply nice to everyone he met. Leading up to his untimely death in 1916, Case was still poised to have his comedy career continue, with an offer from what would later become the MGM Theater to do a host of shows. Contacts with his agency showed that after all of these years, there was still something unique to Case that audience simply couldn't get enough of. Those that remember the man said he was fun, caring, and always had an idea that he had to get out. The legacy for comedy is stamped forever, 
as Case essentially create the blueprint for the most largest names in comedy today. Guys like Charlie Case are part of the reason intellectual properties today is so protected. And his legacy is made that much stronger considering how much harder it was to stand out when it was politically correct to follow what every other performer did. When he wasn't on stage, Charlie was a quiet person that kept to himself and most would eventually describe him as shy. The demeanor of one with so much control and bravado became clearly seen as an act that perhaps the greatest vaudeville performer of all time had learned to turn on and off. Case didn't go out much and instead worked vigorously when truly understanding that he wanted to put out for entertainment. Friends remembered not seeing Case for days before he would come on stage with a brand new act to all with punchlines that captivated audience, yet again like the hottest new toy on the market. There will continue to be stories about who did what first in comedy, as there are also many different aspects. However, the conscious appears to be that Charlie Case is the godfather of stand-up comedy. Without his contributions, they may be comedians simply stealing routines from one another, having random musical segments to their acts, or simply never pushing the envelope with humor. Family has been a topic that is common for nearly every famous comic today, and humble beginnings of a remarkable storyteller set the foundation of the craft and continue to make millions laugh as he did during the remarkable life. Stay up to date with the latest news in comedy by subscribing here to our YouTube channel, follow Comedy Hype across all social media platforms, and look out for original content on our new streaming service. For Comedy Hype News, it's been your boy K-Rock.